Bill, Bill asked me a couple of years ago, what are the roles that really, you know, fancy? I said, whoa. And I wrote out, you know, a list. And I put time in them. He said, time? Really? And I said, yeah. He said, why? Uh, it's so hard. It's just so hard. And the thing I love about being a classical actor is that I get to wrestle with characters that are so complex and so hard in a language that's, um, you've got to be good to be able to communicate what those words are and what they mean. So all of those challenges are just thrilling to me. And I can't think of, well, Lear, <laughs> which I did last fall with Amanda Dana directing, um, and Timon, uh, two enormously difficult um, characters, kind of related in a strange way. One of the recurring themes that I discovered as I was, as I was working on Lear is that whole sense of ingratitude, that, that, that rage at being disappointed by people. When you were expecting them to behave in a gracious way with gratitude, um, and instead they stab you in the back. Instead they pull the rug out from under you. And it, and it kind of, it throws you off balance and kind of makes you insane. And for Lear, you know, it literally does. Um, for Timon, it, uh, it causes him to, to make this, uh, this uh, entire 180 degree shift in his life and his worldview. And he goes from being the gentlest, um, most supportive, um, you know, it's a, he's, he is um, a, um, a philanthropist, um, but in the best way. You know, it's not just giving money. It's be a concern about the welfare of the person that he's, he's dealing with and, and uh, finding out something and, and exploring to find out exactly what that person needs and then trying to give that person, but also throwing diamonds at flatterers. You know, so there's some ego. <laughs> you know, he's very complicated. Very good. And it's so interesting to me, at the end of the play, the last scene that Timon appears in, um, Flavius, his, uh, his steward, Robin Nordley, uh, brings two senators. And uh, Alcibiades, Jonathan Hogan, has, uh, is about to attack Athens with Timon's full support. And they've come to ask Timon to rescue Athens. Now, why would the senators, in this time of real peril, come to a man who's living virtually naked off roots that he digs up in the forest? Why? Why do they come to Timon? So it, the only thing I can understand from that, and it ties in with something that Alcibiades says earlier, is that Timon at one point was a military leader and quite a renowned one and saved Athens. And so there's that sense of a character who comes from a military background, who's, who's kind of grown up, I think. In my backstory, and for me it's always so important to try and work out the backstory of the character just to make sense and like, it, nowhere more so than in measure for measure, trying to make sense of the dude. And I worked out this elaborate backstory that everything held together in my head. And that's all I really need. You know. So my sense of, um, of Timon is that he was the younger brother of a very wealthy family. And that he went into the military and loved the comradeship, loved the sense of shared responsibility, of, of shared um, support, mutual support that that campfire mentality, that I've got your back, brother, kind of mentality, and achieved enormous success um, and rose to, to great prominence. Uh, and then his, his older brother uh, died without heir, and he suddenly had this fortune. And he left the army and began this new life of philanthropy um, and kind of lost his way and keeps trying to find that sense of comradeship, that sense of brotherhood that he had in the military life. Um, but he surrounds himself with people 
who are lying to him and he's believing them. They're flattering him and he's believing them. And, um, and then that precipitates all that happens in the play. I'm at the point uh, now with, the, uh, with Timon where I'm trying to ingest all the text. You know, he's, he's the fifth longest role in Shakespeare after Othello. Uh, more than Lear, more than more lines than Lear. <laughs> Um, and the only way I can ingest those words is to really break down the speeches and understand specifically what it is that I'm saying. And um, one of the things that terrified me initially about playing time and is the whole second half is all ranting. You know, he just never stops. He has endless lists of terrible things that should happen to people and, and terrible things that he wants people to do to people. Um, and um, a lot of the reviews of uh, uh, past productions talk about the, uh, the unremitting sameness of the second half of the play and the tendency to shout and so on. But what I've discovered in really breaking down and, and trying to understand and ingest the words of, of that whole second half is that there's enormous variety in it. You know, he's, he's, a, he, he's a man of crackling intelligence, and uh, he's, he's uh, obviously, as a Shakespearean um, uh, major character, he's, uh, he's very eloquent. And um, uh, so there are so many opportunities for different levels, and, uh, it's, uh, and it's language that I don't think anybody in our audience will be familiar with. You know, there are not a lot of good uh, speeches from this play that are done, you know, elsewhere. There's not a lot of, what are they called, war horses, you know. Uh, and yet, uh, what, what has again really surprised me, and I had heard this from Louis and uh, Louis Douthat and uh, others who are more uh, erudite than I, um, that uh, the language is spectacular. It's just astonishing language. And uh, at times, very difficult to you know, to make sense of. So one of the other things that I've been uh, been doing is uh, going through and just changing words to make them more understandable. Um, it's always my approach with Shakespeare. Uh, the important thing is to tell the story. The important thing is to tell the story um, as truly as possible to what Shakespeare intended and to the way Shakespeare expressed it. But if Shakespeare used words and phrases to express it that are baffling to our audience, they don't help in the storytelling. And uh, I feel we have absolute license to, to make the alterations that need to be made. So I'm, I'm going through and making a lot of those alterations.